Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. It's a lovely sunny day, or it is when the clouds have moved across a bit. There's a few clouds going through, which is a good thing, it keeps it a little bit cooler. We're starting this week in the tunnels, because I've actually took the cover off this tunnel, which contains the calibrese, and I'm weeding it, hoeing it, and putting some coffee grounds around the plants to try and stop some of the slugs getting across to them and then I'm going to plant about four kale plants in here as well then as the others are harvesting I'm hoping to be, hold, to be able to hold the rest of the kale plants and then backfill with those and winter cabbages these are harvested now first thing I'm going to do is just go around and take the bigger weeds out and take the small leaves off the cabbage plants or in this case calibrese plants so that the slugs don't get to the bottom leaves that are dragging on the floor here's the weeds look there's only odd ones about you'll soon get those you could actually owe them off quite quickly but such like as this which i think that's some sort of willow willow herb type of weed if you don't pull them out nice and gently they'll just snap off and regrow so it's best to pull them out if you can likewise this one which is a nettle that's come in with the horse muck I think so you need just to make sure you get the root of those like that look this is fat end that's easily pulled up there's nothing really worries me in here weed wise we we'll soon whip these out. It's a gentle pull, and make sure you get the root if you can. The ones to watch out for are the daisies. If you get those, you might have to get the, the fork and just loosen it a bit because they take quite a bit of getting up. These are not too bad, look, we'll soon get those out. And there's an odd. odd piece of grass in but they don't take much pulling up there's nothing really in here now I've just lightly taken the bigger weeds out by hand and now I'll take the small leaves off the cabbage I just pull them up and these are the leaves I'm taking off look I don't know if you can see it with that in the way these ones that the slugs are eating now because it's laid on the top of the soil, they, they can get to them quite easy. So I just take those off. If you just click them down, they usually come off. You can see where the slugs have got to them. The weed there, that's what I was after then. That's it. I'll just do that one. Just in case I hold them up and just pull them off using this small hoe and it's quite sharp I have sharpened it and I keep it very low so we're cutting the roots off and moving the tops of the weeds away so that the, if you do it this way especially it's a bit dry they don't regrow carefully you don't touch the brassica plant with the hoe especially if it's sharp you'll damage the stem now Here's the coffee grounds. I get them once a week. It's about half a bucket a week I get. And I put it through a fine screen and get it dry. And then I'm sprinkling it round the So same as normal. Lot. What? I go quite close to the plants. It doesn't do them any harm. There you are. Just lift them up and scatter it around. There's a couple of weeds there. Look, we'll just take those over there. There's just enough in here to finish these. And then when I get some more, I'll do the kale with them. There you go. Here's the kale. I've grown them in the root trainers. So the rest of them I can hold for quite a little time. 
before I put them in. When we open this, I think you'll find that the roots aren't are down but not thickened up yet. So, as normal, we'll use the bulb planter, give it a good wiggle. Let's save the soil. One, two, Let's open the root trainers, have a look, see how they've got on. Yes, they're fine. But you see, I can they haven't really thickened up the roots, so the ones that are left will stay in there for a little time longer while these calibres get ready and the cauliflowers and then we can plant them for the winter crop. There we go then. Where shall we go? That one first, I think, furthest away. Just push them in nice and tight, remember, because the brassic is. If you set kale now, you'll get this sort of middle and end of summer. But if you set it later, then you can have it right through the winter as well. Just pop them in for now and then I'll fork them in. Put that compost with that one. And because the soil is quite hard and dry, I'm using this little fork just to loosen around them. And then I can press them nice and tight. You see, look, just loosen the soil. and then press them round them roots nice and tight there you go right we'll give them a drink of water a good drink of water although the ground at the top it's quite dry. I noticed on the bulb plant it's quite wet lower down. But with these being newly planted they will want a good soak. Now that's the coffee grounds put around the Calibris which hopefully will stop some of these slugs getting onto them and the little bit of kale put in. I shall now put the cover back on and I'll come back to you and we'll go down the bottom greenhouse. Now that's the cover put on and hopefully it shouldn't want any more work doing to it apart from maybe a little bit of watering because calibres and cauliflowers do not like to be dry you must keep them wet all the time but I can irrigate through the mesh that's fine and so hopefully the next time we take the cover off will be to harvest. Now we've made it into the bottom greenhouse. It's quite warm in here. I've put the heavy duty fleece around the edge just to stop that very bright sunlight coming in just yet. We will get it through the roof, but uh, we'll, at least we can stop half of it. Now everything has been potted, everything's doing fine. There's quite a bit that could go out, such as the sweet corn, but we have some really bad weather coming this weekend. So they're going to stay where they are. Everything's going to stay where it is until we get through this next cold spell. And then I think it'll be time to get things put out. Yes, after the weekend, give it a towards the end of that week it should be towards the end of our frost days so we should be fine to put them out i can get the courgettes out the pumpkins and start thinking about the beans and the peas which i'll show you in the frame outside
can't keep them in here, it'd be far too hot for them. These tomatoes here are the blight resistant ones that I'm going to try and crop outside. They do need side shooting, so I'll probably go through those this evening. I won't do it in this heat. I'll, they click off better when the plants are colder. So we'll do that this evening. But they are waiting to go out. That's the tomato mountain magic. At the far end, we've got some Roma. And then here, these are crimson crush. They're waiting to go out. They're actually throwing a flower or two now, but they'll be fine until the weather's right for them to go out. Now, in this frame, you can see the beans and the peas are doing very well but again and there's a little bit of bed in there that I want to put in amongst the the vegetables but they'll have to wait until after the weekend same again in this side there's a few beans all waiting that's the the rest of the kale is there look in those uh, root trainers that'll be fine and a little bit more bedding to go between the two so we get some flowers in this is what's left of the lettuce now usually you throw those away but I save them and I give them the chickens because the chickens absolutely love those when they start stretching and the rhubarb we could pull it this week but again I think I'm going to leave it I don't want to expose too much of the new growth to this bad weather that's coming. Now the lettuce I've already planted in here, it's picking up quite well now, but that will be covered up over this weekend. Perhaps leave it on all day Sunday if the weather's bad. Now I did get all the beetroot in eventually. Now they're hardy-ish so they'll be quite all right in there. That ground's quite warm and it will radiate some heat at night. At this end I put in some Swiss chard that I was asked to try. So they're in there, they're doing fine. They are quite tough, they'll take it. Now on this quadrant here, which is quite large, this is where I'm going to put the beans and the free... The beans and the pea frames inside a net like I did do last year up there. I've got all the wood ready to start but now I've got to try and remember how I did it. If I can't remember then we'll have to invent something new this year. Yeah. I think I've got an idea how it is. The garlic's doing well, still coming into its own. No scapes on them yet but then again we don't want them this early. They're doing fine. I did dig one up because somebody told me that somebody had been flooded once with their garlic and they'd all gone rotten. So I was a little bit worried. So we sacrificed one plant and it was fine. So we seem to be okay at the moment. I don't know if you can see in there, but the leeks we planted last, last week are all stood. I did water them the next day, but I'm afraid I haven't watered them since. The celery in this end of the frame is really growing well now. I think really it could do with a drink, but we might get some rain, we don't know yet. If not, then I will have to irrigate, because I don't know if you can see it, the ground is beginning to crack. The onions are going from strength to strength now. No problems there. The pigeons are leaving them alone now, so we'll let them get on with growing and just keep the weeds down between the rows. The broad beans are doing very well, quite pleased with them. Just keep your eye out on these tops for the black fly that will be coming in soon because the ants will bring them and as soon as you see some just nip the tops out, take them all out and take them away. Now I have taken the net off because it was quite a big net and I put it on double and I saw that there was a bumblebee struggling to get through so I've took the net off so they can come and go as they please now 
if it does get a problem over the weekend with the cold and the wind I can always put it back on it's no problem the sweet peas are doing well they're starting to grow now I we'll just leave them alone and let them get on with it as soon as they start to really get growing we'll take that net off because the pigeons won't bother them then the potatoes are now just popping through the soil so when it gets cold this weekend I should just pop down and cover them up bury them they'll be fine now the other thing I've done to the potato beds is because this soil is drying out quite fast after the last rainstorm and it sets very hard so what I've been doing I don't know if you can see but I've actually been irrigating it just to keep that top soft so the potatoes can break through easier it'll make ridging them up a bit easier as well because it won't be so hard if you've got very light land there's no need but this heavy land really does set fast if the sun comes out after it's been raining it really sets hard so by just putting that bit of water on it just keeps it soft so I can just ridge them now I don't want to lift the the net but as you can see all the red cabbage we put in they're all stood well now looking after themselves I don't know if you can see but the carrots are germinating now they're coming up they're fine now the comfrey is doing very very well but as you can see the bees are loving it not going to cut it to make tea or anything or any fertilizer with it I'm going to let the bees have it because to me the bees are more important so they can have it the other thing to show you while we're here is that the morello cherry has gone it actually died this year and we couldn't we couldn't find out what had happened anyway I took it off dug the root up and something had gnarled away at the bark below the soil level below the graft and it took all the bark which actually obviously killed the top so we're going to have to rethink and replant the morello but in the meantime we'll give the end of the shed a good coat of paint I think the blueberries they're doing fine the bees are in there they're happy should get a good crop out of that hopefully this year the gooseberries have set now as you can see so they will need some some sort of rain or irrigation to swell them berries up the currants they're set in as well now same thing they'll want some water i did have quite a bad attack of aphid on the currants but I gave them a good spray with some soap and it seems to have controlled it they might want it again in a day or two okay the rest of these um, currant bushes the gooseberries and the white berries look, currant bushes and the blackberry all doing very very well as I say there was a little bit of aphid but I think we've won on that now I've been wondering what I can put into this little bit of space decided I'm going to put the dwarf beans in there they are really dwarf and if I plant them in there I haven't got to worry about the pigeons getting in although somewhere I've got a thrush that keeps getting in I do believe it's pushing underneath the bottom of the net somewhere but I let it out and then I'll have a look round where it is the raspberries are setting well now they've done their job that means we've had some busy bees I'm well pleased with those we should get a decent crop off them the strawberries are starting to flower now a little bit thin on that side but there's plenty of flowers on them with the bad weather coming we'll have to just keep an eye out and if we see instead of a yellow eye on the flowers if there's a black eye on them obviously that's not going to fruit this year but i can't control the weather and i certainly can't fleece this lot now 
So we'll chance it with the early crops. They're doing quite well, they're all right. Now the compost bins are painted, ready for the season. We've got three, got two empty and one nearly full at the moment. Now this big bin I use for the horse manure. But obviously with the virus etc, Mark hasn't been able to get any to me. So as we stand now, we are empty. No horse manure for next year. I should begin to worry soon, I think. Now, somebody asked me how the vine was getting on that we planted. It's doing fine. It's actually getting ready to put on a flower or two. Obviously, if it tries to put grapes on this year, we'll take them off. It's not that time for this one. Maybe next year we'll have a few or the year after, but this year I don't want no grapes off it. I want it to grow and establish before we start letting it fruit. Now the old grapevine, which as you know is a bit of a monster, it started to green up already. We'll have a canopy in the next few weeks and then we'll have to start cutting it back not long after that. Right, now while we're passing we'll just show you we've got two broody hens. They've got no egg, well they've got two rubber eggs each under them and I don't think they're going to hatch those but they'll sit there for another couple of weeks yet. They come out once a day for a drink and something to eat and a poo which you have to clean up because you can imagine it's rather a large smelly one so you need to find that clean that up but they'll they'll be fine this is the rest of the nest boxes that we have and these are what the perch on at night and then i drop this cover down leave the door open this time of year we also shut the cage doors so nothing no foxes can get in at night and they're quite happy so it's got plenty of water and plenty of food and then we'll get plenty of eggs at the moment i think today we had four but there's only five of them laying at the moment there's some of them three of them there enjoying a little bit of sunshine this end of the garden is what we call the chicken garden now every morning for about an hour I do so much work on these gardens. We'll show you how I'm getting on with it. But then first thing the next morning, I have to go and start again because these tend to go out of the way to destroy anything that I do. They go and scratch it all up again. But we'll show you the progress. This is one of the beds I've done and that there is the canopy that we keep up so they've got somewhere to go outside if it rains. The lilac is now in flower and it smells absolutely gorgeous. It really is a nice one. As you can see, it's the garden actually belongs to the chicken. So she's decided she's going for a dig and a scratch and a bath in the soil. Uh, this is the view from the top of the garden. We've got a bit of a patio up here and you can see through the chicken garden past the sheds right down to the bottom greenhouse. Quite a walk. Now we'll just pop round to the top greenhouse and show you the progress in there. Finally got to the top greenhouse. As you can see, it's nearly all geraniums. I've got lots of the tomatoes potted up and on the shelves waiting for the geraniums to go, which will be the end of next week. We'll take all the geraniums out and we'll make the show beds up and hanging baskets out of what we've got this year. So it'll be interesting to see what we've managed to get through the winter to make the displays because obviously we we haven't been able to get to the garden centers etc and i don't think we will be going us young ones you know so everything will be be made from what we've got 
these are nearly all the geraniums as you can see they're stunning again some lovely colors all the fuchsias we've got which are about the same quantity of what's in here are all in the courtyard out of the wind and then at night time if it's going to be a frost I shall fleece them so they'll be a good combination altogether of what we've got I'll just show you the cucumbers because we have flowers now here's the flowers with the little cucumbers behind them they won't be long now I do believe there's about four um, there's two on each somewhere so as you can see the tomatoes are doing fine now they just really need bigger canes and putting on the floor and let them run they really again they'll need side shooting i'll do that this evening that one terribly bad one, one's doing that'll be it for this week you've had a good walk up the garden now you've enjoyed it you've seen more or less everything we've got obviously we can't take you in the courtyard and on the front can't take you on the front because next door's got a swimming pool for the children and although it's quiet at the moment, when we were filming earlier on, I could hear them squealing, so I know they're around there. So bless them, we'll leave them alone. That would be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully next week we can be busy doing some planting, if the bad weather's come through. So take care, everybody. Stay safe, we're nearly there. And hopefully... We'll see you all next week. Bye now.